Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Release by Rowan Shaw. And this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. January. Bebe et toi. I wish Noah were here, Charlotte said with a sigh as Johan grabbed her hand and they entered the maternity store with Raphael on their heels. Months prior, Johan had insisted on having the baby baptized, though neither Noah nor Charlotte were believers. They had agreed, if only to please their shared lover, but from Charlotte's point of view, the mere idea of baptizing the baby complicated their lives. It was impossible to explain to the priest who the other parent was in their thruple, either Johan or Noah, since they had foregone a paternity test. That Saturday, which Raphael had off from work, they had invited him as the baby's godfather to come along. Charlotte wasn't even sure if her best friend could be the godfather since he practiced no religion, neither his mom's Catholicism nor his dad's Islam. Raphael was an atheist through and through, but he would pretend to follow the faith only because the baptism was so important to Johan. Charlotte wanted her girlfriend nor to be the godmother, but as a Muslim, she wasn't allowed. They had settled upon Johan's Johan's older sister in the end, even though she'd made it clear she didn't approve of their living arrangements. Next time, Noah will come too. Besides, you already have two of us here. Johan gave Charlotte a wink and shot Raphael a half smile. I can't believe he's gone to Angelome with and without us, no less. Johan failed to conceal a smirk as they kissed her knuckles, their soft lips brushing against her skin before they placed their rugged hands on her round belly. We have something bigger coming, wouldn't you say? You're getting close, one more. All the more reason for him to be here, Charlotte grabbed a basket, but Raphael yanked it out of her hands. I can still carry a basket, she protested. Yet Raphael was already moving through the aisles of diapers, heading for the infant car seats, unaware of the few people turning their heads to take in Johan's appearance. Eccentric, standing at six feet two, Johan harbored a head full of curly pink and yellow hair, their eyebrows dyed an electric blue over their beautiful hazel eyes. Their tanned face displayed sharp features and a straight, no straight nose over luscious lips. They were wearing a tight black turtleneck sweater under a leather trench coat over a long black skirt falling down to their black combat boots. Between Punk Johan and Gothic Noah, Charlotte had no choice but to get used to the constant stares. Her two lovers sure knew how to catch the attention of complete strangers. It baffled her how Raphael wasn't phased by the side glances either. At five feet nine, he was smaller than Yopan. His skin was darker, a deep brown shade that clashed beautifully against his loose white clothes. His eyes held a mesmerizing hazel hue, while his cheeks dug into two dimples, even when he wasn't smiling. His hair was cut short. His husband helped him shave his high taper fade in afro during the pandemic. Raphael was busy pursuing, perusing the car seats while Eurodance from the 90s blasted from the radio. Hmm. Don't you think we might jinx it buying all this stuff already? Charlotte asked, scurrying to catch up to Johan, who was one step ahead. Johan raised an eyebrow, their eyes twinkling. I don't believe in midw midwife's tales. We need to be ready. It's not like we can buy all this stuff the day after. You'll be exhausted and I want to be at the hospital to help. Noah, too. We're already late as it is. The baby's coming in two weeks. Tops. Raphael turned around as someone nearly bumped into him. He looked at Charlotte's huge belly under her gray maternity sweater. Her breasts were even bigger than usual, though he tried his best not to stare. I agree with Johan. I can get, I can get you anything you want during or after the birth. Just call me. Adrian and I can have it delivered, and we can help build any furniture you want. They should have bought all the supplies months ago, but Charlotte had refused. Now they had to rush to get everything on time and prepare the nursery. At least they'd already painted the walls a light turquoise blue, the same color as Noah's eyes. We still haven't discussed the logistics with your OBGYN, Johan added. I know, I know, Charlotte tried to dismiss the subject, but Johan wouldn't let it go. They grabbed her by the shoulders and pulled her in the aisle, stroller aisle, forcing her to look at them. Charlotte, I want to be there and Noah as well. We couldn't come to the medical visits because it made you uncomfortable. 
you lied to your doctor and said you didn't know who the father is. That's technically not a lie, she replied. Johan scrunched their blue eyebrows. It is a lie. It's either me or Noah. You're the one who didn't want us to take the paternity test, but you can't give birth alone. We need to be there. She cast an embarrassed look at Raphael, who had the decency to look over the strollers as if no argument was going on around him. He looked like a real baby expert. Charlotte knew he'd bought books about babies and everything. He took his job as godfather seriously to the point where she wondered if he didn't wish to have a kid of his own. Johan caught her attention again as they caressed her cheek with their calloused fingertips. We don't know whose DNA the baby has, what genetic conditions, family medical history, and so forth. You know my dad died of cancer. I'd like to know if it's something the baby could have inherited if they're mine. I agreed not to force a test, but I won't cave in when it comes to the birth. Can we just discuss all that another time? Charlotte tried to disengage and pull away from Johanna. She always did, but Johan shook their head. No, we need to discuss this now. Are you ashamed of us or something? Her eyes watered just slightly. This happened a lot lately with the overflow of hormones and whatnot. She could barely control her emotions. She stole a glance at Raphael, who had his head buried in one of the strollers like an ostrich trying to hide. Charlotte, we are here for you, Johan insisted. People will judge me, she whispered in her repressed sob. She hated weeping. She wasn't one to cry easily, but her body had betrayed her from the moment she got pregnant. Johan sighed. Haven't they always, though? Not when I was closeted, no. Her eyes rimmed with tears that... She blinked away. Were you happier then? The sadness in their voice killed her each time. She hated the part of her that wished she were straight, and she knew Johan didn't care for her self-hatred either. Not really. No. Raphael raised his head right then. So much for him not listening. Charlotte, you were Polly before you knew you were bi. Queer or not, you weren't meant for an easy life. But you were loved. That's more than many monoamorous people can say. Charlotte motioned for him not to talk so loud and threw a quick glimpse around to make sure no one had heard his, speak, his spiel. Johan shifted forward, their warm body against hers, her big belly flush against their flat stomach, when a customer tried to sneak behind them. This is our time, Charlotte. Noah and I were so happy about this. I thought you were too. I, I am. You need someone there for the birth, and you know your parents. Johan didn't finish the sentence. Charlotte's parents had disowned her when she came out as Polly. They said that wasn't part of her father's Vietnamese traditions because she was a woman, or her white mother's strict Catholic religion. They rejected her right then and there. They didn't even know about the bi part. They sure didn't know she was pregnant either. She doubted that would have changed anything. She preferred not to find out and avoid any more heartbreak. Johan looked up her up and down with adoration. She knew they loved her as they took in her short auburn pixie haircut and her dark anthracite eyes. Johan couldn't hide the adulation in their gaze even if they wanted to. I love you, they whispered, then kissed her, brushing their fleshy lips against hers. Their tongue tasted like peppermint, making her moan in their mouth until they pulled away and repeated, I love you. Nothing will ever change that. I know. Johan nodded and grabbed her hand. Let's take a closer look around. We can finish this discussion later. Okay, she acquiesced, a familiar ball of dread settling in her belly as they both joined Raphael. You don't think Noah will be upset he can't choose? She added to distract herself from her discomfort. Johan shrugged. Noah lost his chance when he decided to go to Angela May and choose his graphic novels over us. It's for work, Charlotte whispered. It's the first time he got to travel and film YouTube videos outside Paris since the pandemic. Right. Still, Johan ran their tongue over their lower lip, then bit on it as they winked at Charlotte and raised their chin at a stroller Raphael was pushing. He's perfect for the role of Godfather, don't you think? Raphael showed her the bit, huge black stroller he was struggling to maneuver. I found this. What do you think? That's too big, Charlotte said before noticing the clothing aisle across from him. She cooed over some beige pajamas with a llama stitched on the front and let go of Johan's hand to rush toward them. She grabbed the PJs and felt the soft cotton under her thumb. 
We can get it if you want, Johan said as Raphael replaced the stroller on the display. Charlotte shook her head, but she wouldn't let go of the outfit. Ma chérie, you can get whatever you want, okay? She gave a tiny nod and dropped the item in her basket before looking at a little dress. It's so cute, but we don't know the gender. Johan cocked an eyebrow. Are we really going to buy outfits based on gender? Have you looked at me? Charlotte sized up her lover and gave a chuckle. You're right, I'm being ridiculous. Let's get it. She put the dress in the basket and took Johan's hand, relaxing as she focused on their warm skin against hers. Though she tried not to talk about it, the whole pregnancy caused her anxiety. It was bad enough that her parents no longer talked to her, all because they refused to understand how she could be involved with two persons at once, the three of them living under the same roof, sharing the same bed every night. That was also that was without her parents knowing that the three of them were also open to other people outside their triad, or at least they used to be until they decided to conceive a child and not include anyone else until the baby was born. That her parents didn't know about the pregnancy at all saddened her more than Johan and Noah could comprehend. When Raphael snapped his fingers in front of her face to pull her out of a reverie, she, he handed her a baby blue cardigan that opened in the front. What about this? Can I get the baby this? She let out a small, a little smile. He'd already spoiled the baby with tons of books she didn't even have shelves for yet. What a lovely couple, interrupted an older white lady with short gray hair as she came up to them, smelling strongly of rose perfume, the scent of which made Charlotte nauseated. She tried not to gag. To Charlotte's relief, the woman refrained from touching her round belly. When are you due? In two weeks, Charlotte replied. The woman looked at Johan up and down, though not in a judgmental way. Your baby is going to be so beautiful with the two of you as parents. Charlotte braced herself for the common comments on biracial babies, but the lady didn't push the subject. Johan was laughing to himself, probably because Charlotte received the exact same comments when she was with Noah. It was when she was with the two of them showing affection for one another that people didn't quite know how to handle the situation. Johan's lips quirked up. Charlotte knew that smirk all too well. She didn't like it one bit. There's no guarantee I'm the biological parent, Johan let out. Charlotte felt like pinching them and hiding in a hole. She winced and squeezed Johan's hand strongly enough to make them squirm as they shot her a glance. The woman took a little step back. Oh, but I thought, she looked at them both in turn while Charlotte blushed all the way down to her neck. Our boyfriend isn't here, that's all. Johan shot back. There's usually three of us. Stop, Charlotte hissed between her teeth. Then she nearly choked and <clears throat> started coughing as the grandma's eyes widened and she stared, her mouth gaping. To Charlotte's surprise, the little white lady winked at her. You go, girl, she said with the naughtiest grin. Two of them all to yourself, huh? She shook her head, laughing a little. Wish things were that wild back in my day. She examined Johan and turned back to Charlotte. Is your other boyfriend as stri striking as this one? Of course, Raphael chose that moment to get closer, holding out some more clothes he wanted to buy. My, my. The lady's eyebrow shot up almost to her gray hairline as she took in Raphael. Well, don't let me keep you, dear. I'm sure you're plenty busy getting ready for the little one. I wish you the best. I'm going to be a grandma myself in a month. Thank you, Charlotte whispered, unsure if she felt relieved or still furious. It was obvious the lady thought Raphael was the other boyfriend. As soon as the lady left, her note rose sent lingering behind. Charlotte turned to Johan, rounded her eyes at them, and gave them a tap on the arm. You, I swear, why do you always do that? Johan cracked a breathtaking smile, their white teeth nicely aligned as their eyes flashed with mischief. Because the way you blush is adorable. It's not funny, Johan. And you keep worrying people will judge. See, she wished she were you. What did I miss? Raphael asked. Why was she staring at me? Oh, nothing, Johan replied. Charlotte is hiding her true self again. Charlotte's brow furrowed. People do judge. My doctor does. It was bad enough having to explain to the gynecologist that she didn't know who the father was. She couldn't bring herself to explain the baby had been conceived one of those times when the three of them made love for hours deep into the night. She didn't want to know whom the father was because it didn't matter anyway. They were a family. Her, her two lovers, and their soon-to-be teeny tiny baby. She squeezed Johan's hand and took a deep breath, trying to relax. There were legal complications, too. She couldn't possibly have them both claim fatherhood. 
they decided she would be the only legal parent while they would stand in the shadows. They would be the guardians if anything befell her. The arrangement barely made her feel better, but there was no other choice. The law wasn't made for those like them who loved with open arms and didn't fit the mold of monogamy. Your gynecologist is judging because you didn't tell her what the deal actually was. Wh whatever, she shouldn't be judging at all in the first place. Gosh, I can't believe you told that lady about Noah. She tapped Johan's arm again and they pretended to wince before letting out a deep sigh. Charlotte, I'm queer as fuck. I couldn't hide it even if I wanted to, which I don't. Noah and I don't pass as straight. People are bound to ask questions. People see what they want to see. Not in my case. Not in Noah's case. If she were honest with herself, Charlotte couldn't quite deny that. Many times people had asked her if she was sure they weren't gay. Strangers who didn't get to witness their affection between them often thought Johan and Noah were a couple and she was the straight best friend. People could be so wrong sometimes. Fine. Anyway, she stopped in the linen section. What blankets do you think Noah would like? We're not buying blankets, remember, only mattress covers. Right, but, but look. She scurried to another aisle and brandished a small comforter with puppies on it. So cute. How about you take pictures and ask him? Raphael suggested, catching her side in a few strides. Or we can come back another day when he returns. Charlotte nodded. Let's do that. I'm tired anyway. It was getting harder and harder to leave the house for long periods of time. She exhausted herself quickly these days and required long naps. We haven't looked at the car seats yet, Johan said. That's the first thing they told us to buy. Could you and Noah do that without me? Or you and Raphael? Her body had done its best for the day. Johan gave a nod and led her towards the crash register where a little girl was waiting in line with her parents. She shifted toward Johan and gaped. When Johan gave her a smile, she turned her head to ignore them. Charlotte should be used to the glances by now. Noah's status as a famous YouTuber didn't help either. Though she considered herself outgoing, that level of popularity and scrutiny was a bit much, even for her. Johan kissed her knuckles again, their eyes pinned on her from under their eyelashes. I love you. I love you too, their smile lifted on one side. When is Noah coming back again? She asked. On Monday, 5 p.m., Johan tilted their head to the side. You miss him, huh? I do. I, I hate it when he's gone. The apartment felt empty without Noah's metal music playing, his loud laughs, and his makeup cluttering the top of the bathroom counter. I miss him, too. It won't be much longer. Johan dragged her into his, their arms, her belly bumping into their strong abs. Johan smelled fresh like soap as they kissed the top of her hairline and grinned against her skin. They'd stopped using cologne because the mere scent of it made her sick during her pregnancy. We still need to find a name for baby Boo. Raphael already suggested a few, she reminded them, glancing at her best friend. Raphael was so into helping with the baby, it was almost like he was a full part of the deal. After insisting upon paying for the clothes, he carried the bags. He didn't even give Charlotte time to protest. He led the way to the car, even though Johan was the one driving them back to their house in suburban Paris. Charlotte took shotguns so she could stretch her legs, leaving Raphael squeezed in the back of their Peugeot 508. Traffic was heavy throughout Paris, and not one of them spoke as they passed the various gray buildings with dark roofs, listening to the constant honking from angry Parisians until they reached their quieter neighborhood. Charlotte frowned upon taking in the facade of their two-story house. Did you leave the lights on? Johan Perlo parked the car and shook their head before turning off the ignition. Nope. Charlotte turned around as best she could to grab the bags from the back seat, but Raphael rested his hand over hers and shook his head. She sighed and opened the door before struggling her way out of the vehicle. She needed to pee and didn't care for another incident. She'd learned the hard way to wear protective underwear at this point. I can barely breathe, she said as Johan and Raphael joined her. Only two more weeks, Ma Sherry. She faced the house and frowned again, then stepped toward the landing. She must have forgotten to turn off the lights when they left. Her mind wasn't quite what it used to be, and from what she'd heard, the baby brain might last even after she gave birth. Johan took out the keys and let her in. They looked at each other. Charlotte cocked an eyebrow at the heavy sounds of metal music. Feed My Frankenstein by Alice Cooper was playing so loud the sound was deafening. It was a wonder they hadn't heard the music blasting from outside the house. Wasn't Noah supposed to come back on Monday? Charlotte shouted. Johan gave a shrug when Raphael dropped the bags by the front door. 
Charlotte rushed to the bathroom before returning to the foyer where Johan helped her sit down on the small turquoise bench in the wide open space, then removed her shoes as she called Noah's name. The music lowered, but didn't stop. Clad in a tight black sweater over some ripped black cargo pants, Noah came out of the living room, a smile spreading on his face, his turquoise blue eyes shining. He ran on his tiptoes toward Charlotte and helped her to her feet before kissing her gently on the mouth. He gave Raphael a nod and two kisses on the cheeks, then hugged Johan too tightly. What are you doing here already? Charlotte asked, joy pooling in her voice. He flicked his hand through his blonde hair, the eyeliner around his turquoise blue eyes as dark as his mascara, and rolled his neck. I saw everyone I wanted to see and took all the videos I needed, so I caught an early train. Johan shook their head. Noah, it was supposed to be a whole weekend deal, Thursday through Sunday. They paid you for the publicity. Noah caressed Charlotte's belly. Meh, it wasn't fun without you two. It gave them plenty of publicity as it was. He grabbed both Charlotte's and Johan's hands to lead them to the living room. Raphael followed close behind. He cleared his throat upon passing through the doorway. I'm going to head out. I haven't heard from Adrian in a while today, and that's not typical for him. The three of them waved goodbye after Charlotte thanked him profusely with a huge hug. The moment Noah and Johan let him out, she let herself drop on the couch. She exhaled heavily and settled against the mountain of cushions Noah insisted upon keeping everywhere they could possibly lie down. The shelves of their living room ran floor to ceiling covered in Noah's various graphic novels, comic books, and vinyl records, a lot of which were signed by the authors and musicians. The rest of the furniture was mahogany brown except for the couch that was cream colored. They had chosen everything carefully when the three of them moved in together two years prior, right in the middle of the pandemic. They had selected a house in the suburbs, which made it easier for Johan to care for the mechanic shop they had inherited upon their father's death. With two bedrooms, one for the three of them with a king-size bed, and one for the guests, a kitchen, a living dining room, and a music room for Noah and Johan to play their guitars, the house was big for one so close to Paris. It also held an office where Noah filmed and worked on his YouTube videos as a buy influencer, while Charlotte used the attic for the various models she created as an ecological architect. Her legs sprawled on top of the poof facing her. Charlotte closed her eyes until Noah walked back in and knelt in front of her. He took one of her feet in his hands and massaged her toes. Ah, oh, merci, mon amour. She leaned back as her loud clanking noises seeped in from the kitchen. Johan arrived a few minutes later carrying a tray of warm tea and some petite sablé. Charlotte opened her eyes and grabbed the mug to blow on her drink. She felt so spoiled by them both. Though she missed her family every day, she couldn't remember a home filled with so much love. Noah's and Johan's affection was unconditional, something she wasn't used to. Johan bent by her side and kissed the spot below her earlobe, shooting shivers down her spine while Noah kept working on her feet. What's the plan for the rest of the day? Johan asked. It had taken some time off to be with her while Noah was gone. Their staff was looking over the shop for the weekend. I just want to sleep, Charlotte sighed as she moved to lie deep into the couch. A two mon four? Johan asked Noah. Noah replied with a naughty smile. He helped Charlotte settle and asked her if she was good before grabbing Johan's hand and making a quick stop by the stereo to turn off the music. The two of them left the living room while Charlotte turned to her side and quickly fell into a slumber. <laughs>